Greetings and welcome back to another dev update video for my in-development space game for VR and indeed hopefully non-VR systems, although you know that's less guaranteed. I've been pretty busy since the last update video. Uh, sadly, much of the busyness since the last update video has not been game development related busyness, it has been life related busyness as I've had my parents up visiting and now my better half's parents are also up visiting. Um, so, and that's going to extend into next week, so that's been limiting my available time for development, but I have managed to sneak away to work on a few things here and there, and one of the, one of the key things that came out of the previous update video was quite a bit of chat about the character model. One suggestion which was quite interesting was uh, somebody suggested if I wanted a less uncanny valley effect then I could go for like a robot because then you could have obviously a robot with kind of a floating head and just an animated screen for a face and the floating hands and things wouldn't be so much of an issue and uh, there's a number of issues at play here. There's, there's the sort of style, the aesthetic that I want to go for, there's resource management both in terms of poly count of, of you know putting polys on the screen, putting like detail into the scene um, and indeed my own <laughs> talent or potentially lack thereof at creating 3D models. It's relatively easy to create a 3D model of this sort of complexity of this guy's face. It gets much more difficult the more detail you want to put into that. So um, it was, it's an interesting question. I think the problem with doing a robot character um, is that sooner or later I'm going to have to solve the problem for NPCs, right? So unless I want to have an entirely robot populated universe i'm going to have to solve the problem for npcs so i might as well apply that that solution to the player character off the back of that i decided to have an experiment i also i, I kind of needed to, to to work on it a little bit because we had this kind of crouching incident where i tried to crouch and my head just sort of went through my body because of the way i'd set up and this is why you've been inflicted with this like ultra close-up of my of crater's guy's head with his bouncing mustache which has not received any real work unfortunately um because i'm kind of saving the big reveal here um because you know you want you want uncanny valley you can't handle the uncanny valley here we go so this is what we've got this is this is where we're at now uh i have a body i have a body i have arms uh, i have legs i can crouch um i can jump i can do all the good stuff uh, and all of this through the power of a system called IK or inverse kinematics I'm getting a little bit of frame lag I'm actually recording this in the editor rather than um, in like a, a, a built version for hopefully for expediency so I hope it doesn't all go horribly wrong I hope it is in fact still recording because it would be really sucky if it stopped recording unexpectedly um, so yeah now this of course is not without its problems potentially having an having uh, inverse kinematics to animate the body if you don't know what inverse kinematics are basically i'm still tracking the same points that i was before so i've got the head tracked i've got my hands tracked that's basically it the rest the computer is figuring out a logical position for all of these different body parts so um at the moment this is just separate body parts which i've kind of like glued onto the mesh i could do a skinned mesh in the future which means you wouldn't you wouldn't have these kind of joints um, like between the arms and the hands and the shoulders I don't know if you can see it if, or, or more <laughs> even more tellingly if you look at my waist just to, just look at my waist everyone just look at my waist it's not weird I promise um, like if I, if I bend over can you see maybe you can't see but uh, trust me it basically it's, it's not particularly pretty you get like you get some clipping issues and you get all sorts of that was a little bit weird wasn't it it was kind of weird I felt kind of weird doing it anyway look uh, the point is, inverse kinematics uh, is a way to procedurally animate uh, a character. It doesn't have to be a humanoid character, but obviously in this case it's working for a humanoid character. And it's it's pretty complicated stuff. I, I actually started out by trying to write my own inverse kinematic stuff. I read some tutorials online. I kind of had the idea of a, of a halfway house solution where I'd have inverse kinematics on the arms. Uh, and then I would either not have legs like, like I previously didn't. Um, or if I had legs, I would just have kind of like 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 really simply animated legs, like kind of Minecraft legs, which um, I, I, I'm still not 100% decided on that. Um, I might try showing some of that in a future video to see if people have a preference for this kind of like more natural motion um, or the uh, or the kind of the slightly more sort of comical. But it, it's uh, I think the advantage of having the crazy sort of like like waggling legs is um, you don't have to worry quite so much about 
sort of gliding over the surface. It can look a bit weird. I don't know if you can even see my feet. It can look a little bit weird because the inverse kinematics can't always keep up with exactly where you are. You can kind of get a bit of slide, a bit of drift over the surface. And, and perhaps more importantly, there's the whole uncanny valley effect. Inverse kinematics can be great with very realistic avatars. I, I'm a little bit worried, and I, I, like, tell me what you think about this, honestly. I'm a little bit worried that the, in, the uncanny valley effect actually is, is made worse by this, because you get, you know, what is a fairly realistically animated character, but who is very low poly, and, you know, right now, no eyes, no mouth, just a bouncing mustache, and other sorts of things like that. So uh, we're getting an eclipse. It might be a slightly longer eclipse because I slowed down the rotation, the orbital period of that, um, <laughs> that moon, in the hope that I might avoid an eclipse, but... You know me, I ramble so much, it's inevitable, it's inevitably going to happen. In the end I decided to go for an off-the-shelf kinematic solution from the Unity app uh, store, the, I'm sure it's not called the app store, the asset store, sorry, that's what it's called, the asset store. As is often the case when you buy something off of the asset store, for me anyway, because of the nature of what I'm doing in this game with, you know, I'm, I'm really pushing Unity to do things that it, that it isn't really normally expected to do, so we've got things like, you know, the ability to fly around. Oh, we got a crash. We've had a crash. All right, I'm back. Um, yes, we had a crash. If a proof was needed that this was an in-development game, we had a crash. Actually, I'm pretty sure it wasn't the game that crashed um, because the mustache was still wobbling up and down. I'm pretty sure it was the VR composite that, that crashed, and I suspect it might be because of uh, interaction between OBS, which is the recording software I use, the full screen capture mode of that, and uh, the the VR composite is it because it didn't seem to be anything within Unity that was causing it. But you know, nonetheless, these things happen, um, and it, it matters not. What was I talking about? I think uh, I was talking about uh, the IK solution that I ended up picking up off of the Asset Store. So I tried a number of things myself. Uh, I learned quite a lot, but it's pretty complicated. It's pretty difficult. Um, I got it to the point where it was okay, but I had lots of rotational issues. And anybody who's tried working with Quaternions, um, which is the rotation object, which uh, Unity uses to track rotations of things, will know that they are pretty much a, m a massive nightmare, unless maybe you're kind of a maths geek who knows all about how they operate. Um, for me, a lot of these things I work out in the end through trial and error a lot of trial and error um so it seemed like the more expedient thing to do was to find a solution that someone else had already come up with the downside of that let's um let's walk and talk whilst we uh, whilst we go shall we because then you can see you can see some of the procedural animation stuff if i put this quite far away from me uh, and just back up in my vr play space so you can see my feet there we go. Uh, so I can walk now. I mean, I can walk around. This is me just walking around my play space. And it actually tracks, like, I mean, it's not tracking my legs at all, but it guesses where my legs are pretty well, I have to say. I'm, I'm very impressed. I did a lot of tweaking with the settings to get it to this point, but it's quite good. And, and you don't get a huge amount of drift. There is a little bit of drift, but you don't get a huge amount of drift. I don't know if that means we're in the uncanny valley, though. Are we in the uncanny valley? Anyway, uh, yeah, I, I decided... Uh, I'll, I'll start walking this way. This is me now walking with the trackpad motion, so I'm not physically moving, but the avatar is moving. I think it comes together really nicely. Um, I'm just going to go over here because there's some stuff that I want to show you over here. Um, the trouble with using off-the-shelf components from the asset store is they're usually designed for like a more typical use case in Unity, which is pretty much a small and fairly static world. Um, hold on a minute. I just need to fix something. I've just seen something in the place where we're going that I need to fix. Wait there, I'll be back in a second. There we go, that's better. There was there was something which I had left uh, present in this thing which was supposed to be disabled, so I've just quickly disabled them. Anyway, uh, as I was saying, um, the problem with Unity Asset Stores, and I had the same problem, I, I used a, an off-the-shelf character controller um, initially, and I basically ended up having to rewrite huge chunks of it because I'm not using Unity in the normal use case scenario. My my environment is not static. It's not a, just a level that you walk around that sort of, you know, is, is maybe a few hundred meters or even a few kilometers. You know, the area that this game takes place in is hundreds of millions of kilometers. I mean, it's an entire solar system. Even if it were just an entire planet, though, it would still be far too large for you to just use Unity's normal coordinate system because it's a 32-bit float coordinate system, which means you can only store a number to a certain precision. Um, so basically, essentially, you have to move the decimal point. You've got, you've got the same number of digits and you can move the decimal point around in it. So if you're talking about a distance that's, say, 10 meters from the origin, you can have most of that 
in decimal values because you have like you know a one and a zero and then a decimal place and the rest of it is like down to a very very precise position but if you're 10,000 kilometers from the origin then you've got to have 10,000 before you get your decimal point and you start to get your your you know your precise position so uh, your precise position so um, it, you have to use a trick where basically you, you have a parallel coordinate system, which is a 64-bit float coordinate system that gives you a much, much, much larger play area. I mean, truly enormous play area. Um, and then you need to effectively keep moving your play space around so that you're back at the origin. So every time I reach a certain distance from the origin, effectively the entire, like the entire world, everything that's currently in that world will get shifted um, so that it puts me back at the origin and everything else gets moved sort of around me to where it needs to go. Anyway, I could talk about it in more detail in another video if people are interested. The point is, rarely are assets on the asset store for things like character creators, sorry, character controllers, um, and indeed this IK system designed to allow for that. It assumes that you're not going to just be sort of, you know, randomly moving the entire world around all the time. And this, the locomotion system is the main thing, I think, that has a problem with this. The character controller itself, I think, is fine. It just assumes it, it takes the root position of the character um, but because the feet need to know when they're moving around across the ground in order to animate to pick up and, and you know and, and make steps and things like that if i suddenly as far as it's concerned i've suddenly teleported like a thousand meters or whatever you know whatever my threshold distance is that we're getting with things um and it, it so the, the legs go scooting off in all sorts of crazy directions it took me quite a while digging around in the code to figure out how to fix that um, and I still haven't got a 100% a, a solution for what to do on vehicles. Um, as it is, the position is fine, but when you're rotating the, ve the vehicle around, especially when you're in a spacecraft that can be rotating on all different axes, it confuses the locomotion system and your feet start doing a little jig. Basically, you, you stand there dancing whilst you're kind of like, you know, doing barrel rolls and do a barrel roll and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, we've made it to where we're going. Let me just uh, turn this thing around here. Um, we're, I've got this other little settlement set up just here and I figured if I was going to do characters, if I was going to do animations, if I was going to do IK, why not extend that and start working on the NPCs? So that's what I've done. I've got a few NPCs in here. I'm quite pleased with the way this has kind of worked out. Um, uh, partly, this is like a test for you guys to see, you know, how far into the Uncanny Valley are we? Is there, is there a particular character style that you prefer? I've got three. I've, I've prepared three for you and a couple of, uh, of extras. Call it five. I've prepared five um, for you to look at and give me your feedback on. Um, so uh, let's let's go and I'll, I'll introduce you anyway. Let's let's head over here. Uh, so we've got first of all we've got three ladies for you to meet. Um, so here we've got lady number one. So uh, I'll just put the camera on her. Um, now notice she's animating. I'm quite pleased with this. Basically. It's me. Like, I've basically turned the VR headset and, and motion controllers into a kind of light um, motion capture lab or, or whatever they're called. Like, you know, those, those kind of things, like mocap, a, a mocap facility. So effectively, I'm letting the IK work out the rest of the animations. Uh, I'm then acting out the motions. I record that um, as just rotation and transformation changes. Uh, and then I turn those into animations and I attach them to the characters. And um, I mean, that. You know, they need a little bit of tweaking, don't get me wrong. This was done pretty much uh, in the middle of the night, uh, the night before last, when I was kind of working late, trying to get it all up and running, and I got up and started doing some animations and things. But I'm pretty pleased with it. I mean, this, this actually allows me to do some pretty sophisticated animations, because animations is one of the things, it's a, yet another area where it's actually quite difficult to do animations well. So you either kind of have to go for a very stylized animation style, where you know, you just, like kind of Minecraft, you know, there's just, just arms kind of like come out and legs go out like wildly and that's about it. You don't really worry too much about making it look good. You just stick with a very simplistic view. Um, but if you want animations to look good, then it takes a lot of work and time if you're gonna hand animate things. So this I think is quite a nice halfway house. Um, and we could always mix and match by having like, you know, the sort of Minecrafty style legs. Some of the tips. Uh, and, uh, and the animated hands and things. Oh, look. Talk about the uncanny, uncanniness. Look at me, ah, oh, you missed it, you missed it. Uh, her eyes glow because of something weird I've done with the textures for some reason. Anyway, so this is character number one, right? It's the same style, 
uh, in terms of Polly, but she's got painted on eyes and a painted on mouth. Um, I'm not gonna, you know what, I'm not gonna give my preferences on which ones I think are good and which ones I think are bad. I'll just let you guys comment uh, and let me know. So there we go, that's option number one, painted faces. We'll call that the painted faces option. I should just clarify that these are first drafts, you know, these are literally, the, the eyes are something I whipped up in Photoshop in like, you know, five minutes. Um, the mouth is literally just a black triangle, pretty much. Um, and uh, even this, even this sort of like eyes, eyes and mouth model it, it's we're talking about probably half an hour to just try and um, emboss a couple of eyes into the head and stick a couple of eye things the advantage of of properly modeled eyes is they can actually move around of course they can look at different things there's actually like eyeballs in there that can be that can be animated and can move and, and look at different things um, it may be slightly easier to kind of change the color of them and mess about in other ways potentially we could put like morphs onto the face as well but you know that's all starting to get potentially complicated so this is option two this is the this is the more detailed model face um which admittedly looks a bit freaky there but you know use your imagination for a slightly better version maybe a slightly higher poly version in order to get a bit more detail into it there we go option two uh option three this is option three so this is basically um what creators guy is at the moment it's no face no eyes no mouth for ladies, sadly, no mustaches. Well, I mean, I suppose I could, but no, no, no mustaches. Um, and that's it. I, like, so we'll call this the Doctor Who bad guy one, um, because uh, there's like a Doctor Who bad guy episode where they've got no faces, and it's, it always freaked me out when I was a kid. But to be fair, and like, you know, there's nothing wrong with this. This could be made to work. Um, I'm probably not going to go to the the extent of having. Uh, voice acted dialogue lines and things like that. I'll have NPCs obviously interacting with you and, and you know, talking to you and stuff, but it'll be done through text. So it's not really a massive problem if they don't have eyes and mouths animating. Any of these three could work. I could see any of these three working. So uh, that's why I'm kind of like pitching this out to anyone watching this video. Um, which of the three do you like? Do you think I should put in more detail into all of these character models and really kind of up the poly count on them all and, and go for a more realistic looking, a more, a more, you know, it's still gonna have this this flat shaded look that everything else does. But you know, I could, I could afford to double the poly budgets on these character models without having any real issues. They are very, very low poly for, um, for, for like, you know, human characters. And of course they can have level of detail. So when they go further away, they are, um, they are, they are less well detailed and the engine will be able to keep up with that quite happily. Um, there is a fourth option, as I said, which I'll take a look at just now. He's over here. Uh, this is Kratos guy. This is Kratos guy, uh, in Minecraft mode. <laughs> so, um, rather than, uh, the, the lovely, as you can see, again, not not very, like, there's not been a lot of work has gone into to modeling my um, my outfit here. Uh, I mean, I, I'm not a fashion designer. I'm not a 3D modeler. These things are fairly fairly tricky. I'll, I will get them more refined as time goes on. But for the time being, um, at least, this is kind of, you know, it's more than Minecraft. It's, it's more than just boxes. This is just boxes. It's literally just... Um, taking body parts and, and making them boxes um, which is an aesthetic in and of itself and probably if that was going to be the case the heads would have to go boxy as well because the head looks a little bit incongruous there so it would probably be boxy heads um, probably not just a single cube there would probably be you know a single cube for the head maybe another cube for the nose you know maybe there'd be you know maybe little cubes for the ears I don't know they'd probably be a bit more detailed than just just a single cube but um, that's very stylized that's that's a very specific type of look so uh, i put it in for completeness um and as an option so let me know what you think but i think that's probably a good place to leave off for today if you're interested in me talking in even more and greater length about some of the stuff that i have been mentioning uh, today then by all means let me know and i'll happily uh, either talk in the comments about it or indeed potentially do a whole video dedicated to um, whatever whatever the subject is at hand or at least reference it in a future video but of course that will all have to wait until that future video occurs until then thanks a lot for watching i have been weird wizard and i will see you later